I was not planning on making this video, but I was just getting so many questions on Archer, the merger transaction and the SPAC that is merging with. So I figured it would just be easier to make this video and giving you all the details on the merger transaction. So here's the plan. We'll take a look at the merger transaction. We'll take a look at the financials and we'll take a look at the business model. I'll tell you what I like about this company, uh, what I don't like about this company. All right, so it was announced that uh, Archer is merging with Atlas Crest Investment Corporation, ticker symbol ACIC. The merger was announced on February 10th. The share went up as high as $15.43. And since then, the share price went down a bit. Currently, it is traded at around $14. I like to start my research into SPAC mergers with reviewing the press release. And if anything in the press release catch my eye, then I'll take a closer look at the investor presentation. I like how Archer self-appointed as a leader in the urban air mobility. <laughs> Archer develops electric vertical takeoff and landing or EVTOL. I'll be referring to it as EVTOL. Archer develops EVTOL aircraft and it has entered the business combination agreement with Atlas Crescent Investment Corporation, ticker symbol ACIC. We'll discuss financials later on. We will skip that for now. The fully electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft is expected to be capable of traveling distances of up to 60 miles at 150 miles per hour using technology available today and will transform how people approach everyday life. Now that is important to note. United Airlines announced that it has entered into an agreement to invest in Archer as part of the airline's broader effort to partner with leading technology companies that will decarbonize air travel. Under the terms of the agreement, United has placed an order subject to United's business and operational requirements for 1 billion of Archer's aircraft with an option for an additional 500 million of aircraft. United, in partnership with Mesa Airlines, could give customers a quick economic and low emissions way to get to airports within its major hubs by 2024. So I'm reading that as the order for $1 billion is not binding because it states that it is subject to United's business and operating requirements. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that is how I understand it. That is all that I want to highlight from the press release. Now let's take a look at the investor presentation. I think most investors skip that slide, but it is quite important. It talks about the risks. Basically, it states that the company is in early stages of developing its aircraft. It has history of losses and it expects to incur significant losses for the foreseeable future. It is something that you need to understand. Archer is years from revenue and it is even more years away from profitability. So just keep that in mind. Archer designs and develops electric vertical takeoff and landing aircrafts for use in urban air mobility. Morgan Stanley estimates urban air mobility to be up to 1.5 to 3 trillion industry by 2040. So that is a huge total addressable market. And it received 1 billion in orders from United Airlines and option for additional 500 million of aircraft. And there is a footnote and the footnote refers to 8K filing with the SEC. I did not dig into it, but my guess would be that United Airlines can cancel these orders at any time. I may be wrong. Again, I did not dig into it, but that would be my guess based on the comment made in the press release that we discussed before. What is interesting is the comparison between the design of Archer aircrafts and Jobby's aircrafts. Archer's design uses six rotors to push the aircraft forward and six rotors to lift it up and down. Whereas Jabi's design uses six tilt rotors, so the rotors can lift the aircraft up and down, but also push it forward. I do not know which design is better. The considerations here are both the costs and the weight of the mechanisms. But I'm glad to see that these two companies don't just copy the design from each other. They have their own design. Of course, there's another consideration and it is safety. 
I'm also curious to see which design is more safe. But anyways, that's beyond the scope of this video. Yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but yeah, looking at their team, seems like they are very capable people and they have lots of experience with companies such as Airbus and Whisk. So I think the company is in good hands. All right, so they claim to provide affordable cost per passenger per mile, and it is comparable to an Uber X, and that would be $3.30 per mile. It will have a 60 miles range, enabling trips that are 10 times faster than a car. That's awesome. Just imagine all the time that you can save not having to waste your time in traffic. 45 decibels. Maker will cruise at 2,000 feet and 100 times quieter than a helicopter. That is another great benefit of electric aircraft. They will be so much more quiet than helicopters and airplanes. And of course, they will produce zero emissions. Archer's goal is to build the next great US-based aerospace manufacturer. They are the only EV toll company in the world with a contract from a major airline, that would be the United Airline, which will help finance and accelerate Archer's expansion into urban air mobility. And they say that they have the option to further diversify into cargo and Department of Defense. All right, so aerial ride sharing will be approximately 10 times faster than taking an Uber. The benefits here are clear. No need to spend more time on this slide. Transportation via Archer will be so much more cheaper than taking the same trip with a helicopter. Oh, wow, that's, that's ridiculous. Why is it so much cheaper? Given that operating eVTOL is so much cheaper relative to operating a helicopter, it is no surprise that eVTOL can generate 18 times more revenue than a ride-sharing car. You can charge more per trip. The average trip time is a lot faster. You can do more trips per day. Combine all that and it is not surprising that you can generate, what, around 17, 18 times more revenue operating eVTOL versus ride-share car. That, that is good stuff. I like the numbers. So here's the key to their business plan. In order to drive profitability, Archer plans to operate its fleet of vehicles for urban air mobility. So they don't only plan to manufacture the aircrafts. They also plan to operate an air taxi service. Essentially, that's what they're saying. Direct operating costs will decline over time through scale manufacturing, battery energy density, and improvements in autonomy. Over the life of the aircraft, they believe the urban air mobility business will be three times more profitable than direct OEM sales. Yeah, so their operating income margin is just under 50%. That's, that's quite good. So remember I told you they're not going to generate revenue in the near future. If I'm reading this slide correctly, they will begin delivering aircrafts to partners and launching aerial ride-sharing business somewhere between 2024 and 2027. And they forecast to get to free cash flow break-even in Q4 2025. And I think they're being very optimistic. I don't think they will get to free cash flow break-even until 2026. And then past 2027, they hope to scale globally. In the next four years, they need to finalize their design. They need to test it. They need to get all the necessary certificates from the FAA and the Department of Defense. So they have a lot that they will need to accomplish in the next four years. And here are all the competitors in, uh, in this space. Jabi, Whisk, Lilium, Volocopter, and Ehang. Domestically, I think only Jabi is a, a real competitor. And as you can see, they are very similar in a lot of ways. Archer notes that mass manufacturing design complexity is easy for their design and complex for Jabi. I think that's because Jabi has tilted rotors. I think that's what they mean by complex design. The one thing that is not up to date is the contracted order book. Just today I read an article and I made the video about it yesterday. Jabi scored partnership with US Air Force. Well, yeah, Archer and Jabi, they are very similar in a lot of ways. Archer has United as the key partner. 
and Jabi has Toyota. Archer claims to have a simple design suitable for mass manufacturing. So I like this design. They have six independent batteries, each powering two motors. Passive detachable bus allows for current sharing across buses in normal operation without introducing a single point of failure. Their technology is also covered with multiple patent applications. So yeah, their design definitely seems more safe than the design of a helicopter. In helicopter, if one of the rotors fails, then, well, it's pretty much game over. But in this design, if one of the rotors fails, I think the aircraft can still land safely. Or at least I hope it can. In the future, they also expect to develop autonomous aircrafts, but they are years away from that. Archer opening up manufacturing facility in 2022. They forecast to be able to manufacture 200 to 1000 aircrafts per year. And in the future, as orders increase, they are hoping to scale up their manufacturing and be able to produce over 5,000 aircrafts per year. Okay, so here are the financials. First revenue in 2024, and as they scale their production, their revenue is estimated to grow, obviously. They expect to be the positive in 2025 and cash flow positive in 2026. These are the estimates. So yeah, if everything goes according to the plan, they will be a very profitable company, but a lot of things have to align. Yeah, a bit of margin in the 30s, that's, that's pretty good. So what can I say about the financials? I mean, they're not surprising. Just keep in mind that you're investing in an early stage startup. The startup is many years from revenues and many years from profits. Given that the current share price is around $14, their pro forma enterprise value is actually $4.2 billion. So the good thing is that they will have plenty of cash, over $1 billion. That should be enough for them to grow the business, to, to invest in R&D, to build prototypes and test them, all that good stuff. Existing Archer shareholders will keep the majority of the shares. You and I, the public, our ownership will be around 13%. All right, what can I say? It's a, it's a cool company. I like what they're doing. I think uh, their partnership with uh, United is, uh, is very valuable. I think in the long term, they will do great. Having said that, I don't think I'll be investing in Archer because they're just in the very early stages of development. And I already mentioned that many times in this video, they are years from revenue, years from profitability. So to me, it's, it's a bit too, too risky. And plus, seems like inadvertently I invested in this pack that is rumored to be merging with the Jobby. From the information that is public on the Jobby, I think I prefer Jobby over Archer. I think they're slightly ahead of the game and will be more knowledgeable when the merger is announced. I think I'll just keep the shares in that SPAC. So yeah, I don't think I'll be investing in Archer, but I do like the company and I like their business plan. So yeah, that is my perspective on Archer. Let me know what you think. Do you like the company? That is all for today. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Ciao.